Some of you may be familiar with the Chinakolo community. Uh, I first came across them while over in Medjugorje. If you've been to Medjugorje, there's, a, uh, there's often, as part of the, the time there, uh, a trip to the Chinakolo community where one of them, or two of them actually, will normally give their testimony, their, their life story, how the Lord has brought them out of addiction into this place of freedom, how the Lord has actually given them life back. But what's very interesting, and uh, something that Sister Elvira, the founder of the Chinakolo community, did not foresee, was that as time went on, uh, some of these guys and girls discovering this new life in the Lord also discovered a religious vocation and wanted to serve that religious vocation in the Chinakolo community. Now, she didn't set out to start a religious community, but the Holy Spirit did. So the Holy Spirit started to lead it this way. So lo and behold, now you've got people who maybe spent a wee time on, of their lives uh, on the streets, um, maybe taking heroin, maybe living a life of who knows what, who now want to give their lives back to the Lord. Absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, and so it was, and they got approval, and they were able to, to, uh, to have religious in the Janaclo community itself. But from a, an outsider's perspective, what can be really interesting at times is when one of these Janaclo community sisters stretches just a little and reveals a bit of the arm and you see tattoos, right? Tattooed sisters, right? It's class, our sisters. And you, when you have a quick, uh, you know, when you, maybe you peek past the veil and you spot, it's like they got shot with a shotgun or little, 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 all sorts of little holes down along here from when they had 17 earrings all around. And it's just interesting, like today's gospel, okay? There is a, there is a link, trust me. There's a link, there's a link. Uh, but how, how you see, when we follow the Lord, this is supposed to have an effect in our lives. This is supposed to change us, okay? In our gospel, we see two, the Lord give two examples. Um, he speaks about the cloth. And so when you have a tear in your cloth, a tear in your, like your cloak or whatever, your tunic, whatever it would have been, that you don't put unshrunken cloth. We don't do, we don't do that today. I don't really know how this works. I presume, yeah, like natural fibers, they shrink, don't they? Something so... She washed it first, and then it'll shrink. And then after it's been washed and shrunken, then you can go use it. Otherwise, if you put it on, it'll be kind of baggy and loose, and it'll all tighten up in the first wash and rip the hole, apparently. Um, so shrink the cloth first. And then the second thing he speaks about is the first one being the cloak, external reality, the wine and wineskins. It's like an internal reality. Okay, what's this about? When we follow the Lord, it changes us externally, and it changes us internally it starts with the internal of course when we follow the lord when we want to be his disciples when we have been baptized and therefore made capable of carrying his grace when we receive the eucharist on a regular basis when we go to confession to wash us clean of any stain of sin when we have when we have fallen which invariably we will sooner or later uh, when we accept the lord's sacramental grace uh, in holy orders or in marriage when we've been blessed uh, by the sacrament of the sick all of these ways in which we can receive grace through the sacraments and then sacramentals as well, holy water and religious objects and so on and so forth. All the ways in which God wishes to communicate grace to us, communicate his life to us. All of these things should change us. Right? They're not there for decoration. They're supposed to change us from the inside. Right? So when you, you pour in this new wine, but you can't pour new wine and just stay the same on the outside, are you? burst apparently according to, to to the gospel okay if you're pouring in new wine you need new skins you're going to have you have to change you, you can't you can't pour a bit of jesus into your own life your old life and stay the same it just doesn't work uh i remember there was this kind of tension in me as well for years um when i would have been i was into the social scene where one would like to dance on the dance floor until the wee hours of the morning. Uh, that was me. Uh, so I used, to, I used to really enjoy that. I used to love the, the dance music and dance clubs, all that kind of thing. Uh, and that wasn't particularly sinful. It wasn't sinful. It wasn't sinful. Uh, a lot of what was going on around me may have been sinful, and a lot of what was offered to me was sinful. So there was just like this tension in me, you know, to, to, to want to have this lifestyle, which was very tempting and very thrilling. And at the same time, because, thank God, through the example of my parents and, and, and good faith friends, uh, 
I had the faith as well. There was, this, there was this wrestling in me, you know? Do I go down this route that's being offered to me, which promises me, I'm not sure if the word happiness would have been used, but definitely excitement, right? It's this exciting path, or do I follow what the Lord wants? And there's this kind of, just, just, just this, just this constant kind of a pulling because if you're, when you're, when you're, when you're clubbing, I remember there was this one particular night, night club I went to, which was particularly seedy and smelled quite a bit of the old hashish. And, um, and I just remember being there going, bless this place, <laughs> literally, Lord, bless this place. This place just feels evil. There was, I just, there was just something wrong. It just wasn't sitting with me at all. And, you know, I was trying to sit between these two stools, you know, and have have this life that offered me a a thrill and and still have the faith. But you just, you can't do both. It just, it doesn't work. Now, back in the day when things were a little more innocent, uh, I would imagine, and I mean that actually, when I say innocent, I actually mean that as a compliment, right? When one could actually go out to a Cayley and you dance with half the female parish, and you go home and not a sin committed. Do you know what I mean? Like where you actually have good fun, and you can be out dancing and socializing, and you drink club orange all night, and all you have to do is get up at three o'clock in the morning just to go to the bathroom because you've had too much much club orange to drink, and that's it. No regrets, no sin, no confession necessary. Just good, clean fun. That's very, very difficult these days because we always think, in, in, in today's modern world, um, we always think that fun is whatever you like to the excess. If one beer is good, 15 is fantastic. If one girlfriend is great, 17 must be amazing. You know, and it's all, if, 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 if a certain amount of thing is good, loads of it must be even better. This is just the, the, the mentality today. You know, if it's good to have 100,000 euro, it must be absolutely amazing to have 10 million. And we strive for all these ridiculous goals that don't make us happy. So, okay, back to the so if we're going to pour in Jesus right if we're going to pour in Jesus you can't your old life just if your old life was sinful which for many of us probably was uh, it just can't stay the same it just can't because one one or the other will win all right one or the other will win either you'll say look it's just easier go with the way of the world you're more popular it's the path of least resistance it's just easier forget the whole faith thing or you do follow the Lord and you discover lasting happiness, real friendships, uh, Sunday mornings with no regret. We can. There is that option. But, but you, you, can't, you can't just pour in a bit of Jesus into a sinful life. It's just, it just, it's just not going to work. But then when Jesus, when the, this relation, lived relation with the Lord is alive and active within us, it changes us on the outside. It changes the way we dress changes whether I'm going to get a tattoo or not. It changes how many piercings I'm going to have, uh, i.e. for me, none. Uh, but it, it, it changes the way we behave. It changes our external life as well. Because I carry the Lord within me, there are certain things I cannot and will not do. Certain places I cannot and will not go. End of story. You know, uh, even when I was, in a, when I was, when I was a seminarian, um, and I'd come home from the seminary uh, to, to Thurlis, my hometown, uh, the easiest way to meet all of my friends was on St. Stephen's Night. St. Stephen's Night, everyone was out. So you'd go to the pub, and then you'd meet all the friends in one go, rather than having to meet, you know, go, go visit ten lads separately. Uh, you could just meet them all in one go. So going out on St. Stephen's Night was the easiest way to catch up. So that was grand. Year one, I did it. Year two, I did it. Year three, I did it. And then I, th- I think it must have been maybe my fourth year. Uh, for whatever reason, some of the lads arrived late, and they said, look, do you want to come to... Hayes is with us. That's, that's the nightclub. Um, and maybe for anyone who's not Irish, a nightclub is basically a disco. It's, nightclub doesn't mean what it means on the continent. It's not one of those kind of clubs. It's just a, a dance music and a bar. It's no, nothing more. Okay. So, do you want to go to the, the, the nightclub? And I hadn't, I hadn't gone in years at this point. Like, I said, well, sure, Willie, like, my friend just arrived, so shame to go home now. So I went along. And it was absolutely... <laughs> dismal it was ridiculous it was just because i was stone sober like <laughs> and it was just looking looking at what was going on around me going wow i used to do this num- numerous times a week this is just what a waste of time like 
you know, and then of course with music so loud you can't really have a conversation anyway. It just, it just really highlight, high, highlighted to me how, how empty my life had been. You know, seeing it now through, through eyes that, that, that hopefully have gazed on the Lord for hours a day. It just had completely lost its fascination. The Lord wants to change us from within. But like, we also have to specify when we say change. Change shouldn't be left kind of op- like an open-ended concept. Change means like change for the good, right? Change in the direction of healing. Change in the direction of happiness. Not change for the sake of change. Conversion. Orienting ourselves back towards God, our ultimate good. So we can't just patch on a bit of Jesus to the exterior of our lives. That can happen too. Not so much in today's world, uh, but in order to look holy. You know, we patch on a bit of Jesus on the outside. Looks good, makes us look saintly. But it doesn't work. If it's only patched on, it, it, it's fake. It's not real. It'll eventually rip off. And you can't pour in a bit of Jesus into your old life and expect that just to, to settle. It won't. It won't. You'll constantly be tearing yourself apart trying to decide which, which path you're finally going to take. So the alternative is simply to embrace this new relationship with the Lord, to walk this way with him, unafraid, unafraid. When people look at the situation in the church at the moment, there is uh, no, no doubt that there's a great need for renewal. Uh, Fulton Sheen in this, 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 I read this book for my ordination. Uh, it's called The Priest Is Not His Own, one of the best books I've ever read. Uh, for, it's, it's, it's aimed at priests. Um, yeah, it's, he, wrote, he, he died in 1979, but so he was talking about the priesthood in, in the early 70s. Uh, but it's like it was written this year, like the way he describes the problems in the priesthood and the difficulties and the challenges and so on. It's so, it's so relevant to today. But he says this beautiful line, uh, which I found particularly inspiring. He said, one wonders if we do not underestimate the possibility of conversions. Okay, you think of your own family, think of your own kids, or think of your own parishes. One wonders if we do not underestimate the possibility of conversions. The failure may simply be in our defective preparation and approach. The unbelievers will not go to hear philosophers, but they will go to hear saints. The unbelievers will not go to hear philosophers. They will go to hear saints. Sanctity renews the church. Sanctity, saints. So allowing the Lord to transform us from within, allowing that presence of Jesus to transform our exterior life, this renews renews the church. So we ask the Lord today to help us, each and every one, to live our call to priesthood. We heard in the psalm, you are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. In virtue of your baptism, all of us share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. So we pray that we may understand our calling. Not to to rule and dominate, but to sacrifice ourselves for love of another for the renewal of the church and the salvation of souls. Amen.